Ashley! Don't worry, Ashley. I'm coming for you. Bob is muted. Okay. I will I will I will finish the bit that I am pretending to play Resident Evil 4 in VR uh because Bob let me borrow his Oculus Quest 2 and I've been playing that for a little bit. That was my Thanksgiving. Oh, hello everybody. My input changed I, on my on my microphone. So for podcast <laughs> listeners, that'll be fun. <laughs> okay. Can I take this off now? No, you have to leave it on the whole rest of the show. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, off to a great start today so far. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, uh, you've been playing Resident Evil on that. Uh, thing? That's why I well, got it. That's why I let you borrow it. Yes. Well, to be completely honest, I'm. I only got up to uh, the first time you meet the merchant, which is okay. still pretty early in the game. Uh, but I can confidently say that uh, Metroid Dread has some serious competition for Game of the Year now. <laughs> oh, is that is that bias? Because you like that, that game is, so much? Part of it is bias. A lot of it is bias. But also part of it is like that is a, a really damn good VR conversion. Oh. Like it, it just feel like it just feels so right. And like, yeah, that's my favorite game. So like little stupid things like picking up the ammo box and looking at it like makes me like go all giddy and shit. But even still, like the intensity is still there. The the all the puzzle solving is still there. Like nothing really was sacrificed in the transition to VR. So I have two problems with it, but I don't think those problems are anything to uh you know, to be concerned about. If you want to play this game and you have an Oculus Quest 2, do it. St in fact, turn this turn this show off and go do it right now. Hi, Hi Joel says, Will, how is it to play Oculus with glasses? I have a piece that's supposed to go into them to give you more space on the inside. But I okay. forgot. To I, might, I might need that because that was one of my complaints. It's just general... General VR problems like wearing the headset for too long. I actually wear, I have a smaller pair of glasses than this, mm -hmm. and the headset eventually got heavy on my head and like pressed down on my glasses. So, so and that so, was that was uncomfortable. When I made the video on the Oculus, everybody was yelling at me that A, it's a Facebook product. <laughs> that right. was like everybody's main yes. concern was that you need a Facebook account, you need to log in in order to even use it. And yeah, my uh, the second concern everybody had was no way that thing's comfortable you need the premium strap right. i really didn't have a problem with it. i think it was fine i mean i didn't really so i i only got weird after playing for like four hours and it wasn't that it was uncomfortable it was that um uh i just got dizzy <laughs> after yeah. like after like four hours of being in the headset um yeah and that that, that certainly is a also yo make sure you have plenty of space because i yeah. thought i did i wound up punching my tv at one point mm -hmm. so you just make sure you have right? of space uh no i was actually i was just using the regular speakers ah you should use those headphones and plug them into the side of the, of the headset i was one i thought that was a headphone jack yeah yeah it's I on should. this it's on the side i didn't give you the the oculus headphones because i use them for, yeah. for things sometimes yeah uh so i uh did you play vader immortal at all I did not play Vader Immortal yet. Uh, I, I was too busy playing Resident Evil. <laughs> uh, I do want to. I do want to give it a try. That's next on my list. Well, when you beat, uh, I only I think I only have the first part of Vader Immortal, but I didn't even beat it. Yeah. Um. Anyway, when you get through with that, I gotta I gotta give it a try. Yeah. No. Definitely. I definitely. Yeah. Definitely give Resident Evil a try. The only other complaint I have of it, and I've seen this a lot with it comes to VR shooters, of uh, one-handed weapons are like are fine. But when you have to do two-handed weapons, like they actually make you hold the shotgun like a shotgun and pump it. Interesting. And even the uh, the submachine gun, you have to hold it like this, and that breaks the immersion because you're not you're not holding something that requires two hands. You're holding air, right? And so, like pumping the shotgun is awkward, and holding a machine gun is awkward. Um, so I would just recommend trying to use 
pistols as much as possible. And the grenade, you actually have to pull the pin and throw the grenade. Um, so I can get cumbersome when uh, Dr. Salazar is running right at you. Um, but other than that, yeah, 10 out of 10. Uh, highly, highly, highly contentious game of the year now. Uh, I, I've seen some other games uh, come up with solutions for uh, uh, holding a gun with two hands. Um, yeah. Yeah. One of them was the uh, the little v- the little Oculus demo. It made the really? gun like a weird rubber, <laughs> so like it's <laughs> like it felt like actually kind of good to hold it with two hands. Yeah, I've heard uh, the game Boneworks does a pretty good job, mm-hmm. um, but I know Half Life Alex, you only have single handed weapons in the whole game. Ah, that makes yeah. that makes sense. So anyway, uh, we got uh, RP. 1998 thank you for the eight months hello bob and will hope you guys are well may the force be with you too thank you very much ah that's a that's a stargate reference ah that yeah i haven't seen it yes. the real waggo thank you for the six months cisco yeeted thank you for the 15 and lewin mag thank you for the eight months thanks for the content wolf bros well thank you for the support i appreciate it guys Nothing happened this week, so this is a we, very, very boring week. We reached into our little uh, 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 list of things that we thought would be fun, and today's yes. fun activity we're gonna do with chat, yeah, all you guys, we're gonna come up with what is the best game for every console that has ever existed. Should we just do all home consoles, or should we do handhelds as well? Uh, I guess we should just do home consoles for now okay and even then like we're you know we're going through a lot of systems right uh but first we had a spotify poll oh we gotta talk about that okay yes uh so if you listen to this podcast over on uh spotify you may notice we had a poll for last week's episode and the poll was what do you plan on picking up this black friday uh Forty percent. The overwhelming favorite was a bunch of video games. Obviously, <laughs> I didn't pick up any video games. Actually, uh, neither did I. P- people ask I, me, and I was, I, I was like, I buy games when I when they come out. Like I, yeah. I, I, ne- I can never get one on a sale. It's just not going to so, happen. So, the eShop sta- sale is uh, still going until tonight, and the two games on there. This War of Mine is like three dollars, mm-hmm. and Duke Nukem 3D, the anniversary edition, is like $2. Oh. So I might snag those up. But, yeah, I did buy uh, the Pro Control, a Switch Pro Controller, yesterday when it was on sale at Amazon. Ah. So I actually don't have one of those. Here we have, uh, what did you pick up this Black Friday? uh, You all said a bunch of video games, 40%. Yes. Uh, In second place was... Black Friday is just capitalist propaganda made to keep the working class in line. Wow. You you listen, uh, I think you're all uh smart. <laughs> uh none of that is incorrect. <laughs> I'm just that was you are pretty that's, pretty intelligent there. That's that was the the last the last one's always like the joke one. Um but I guess you all take that very seriously. <laughs> Uh, uh, and in third place was uh, with 16% something non gaming related like a Keurig K Cup Mini, perhaps. <laughs> Interesting. All all the Black Friday like websites I went to, every single one, the same damn Keurig K Mini was on sale for fifty bucks. That means they're just trying to liquidate it. That means yeah. they don't care about it. Yeah, and it's not Black Friday anymore, and it's still on sale. So. All right, what else? We got a, 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 a PS4, a PS5, Xbox Series X, or Switch OLED was 7%. 7%. Uh, 3% PS Plus Game Pass subscription. That should be more because those were all on yeah. sale. Yeah. Um, and uh, 1% a fancy new TV, and nobody is picking up that <laughs> Mario Kart Switch bundle Nintendo keeps re-releasing. Not a single person <laughs> voted <laughs> for that. Interesting. Well, I'm not surprised because I'm sure everybody who watches or listens to this show, A, has a Switch, and B, has a Mario Kart. <laughs> right. Very true. You know, it, it's only the best-selling game on the best-selling system. Maybe they're getting it for somebody else. 
Maybe. Although, if you're, I feel like if you listen to this show, you know that you're probably better off getting like an OLED or something. You know? Mm hmm. I mean, it's a so, decent yeah. deal. You get a game out of it for like a kid, maybe, but I mean, I feel like a kid might, might want an OLED. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So there you uh, go. That was last week's poll. Who knows what this week's will be? Who knows? You got to check Spotify for that nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> hey, anyway. Let's talk about uh, the best games for every single console that has ever been of existence. Yes. Uh, starting with what? The NES? The Magnavox Odyssey. Uh, uh, we're, we're, let's, start, let's, let's start on the NES because yes, we don't know anything. Uh, the, 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 yeah. the, everything before the NES, the best game on that console would be Pong. Yeah. Various versions of Pong. Various versions of Pong. Why is... Photoshop's running like Garbo for me. Uh, okay. So, what are some NES games? Well, let's rattle some off. Uh, if you got Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Mario Brothers 3, The Legend of Zelda, uh, Link's, Link's Adventure, uh, the Castlevania Trilogy. The best Mega Man game games. on the NES is Super Mario Brothers 3, and that's yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they, I mean, they've they've there's great games on there, but when all is said and done, it, it's that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have to be honest. Uh, the the more I go back and play uh, NES games, the more I'm like, I don't know about this generation. <laughs> but Mario Three is the one that I think holds up the most. Yeah, definitely holds up better than any of the other games on there. Uh, I will never say a bad word about this generation, but. I do acknowledge that there is a lot of jank, especially when compared to the 16 bit. But yeah, Super Mario Brothers 3 definitely holds up the best of all the games on that system. And there are some bangers on that system. Right. Uh, I go back and play the original Super Mario Brothers all of the time. Um, yes. Mario 3, I don't play as much, but I will say it's probably the most well done and and uh, and translates yeah. well to, to to today. And there's a lot to do in it. So, uh, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, Thrill House says Kirby is pretty solid. You know, I haven't played much Kirby, but I know that, that came out pretty late in the life cycle too, didn't it? Uh, yeah. So uh, I I I I'm not surprised that that probably holds up pretty good. Uh. Yeah, so I I think that uh, this is a pretty easy one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, what else? Uh, let's. What do we do? Master System. I'm trying to think. Like, cause I've played some Master System games, but I don't know if I can, you know, authoritatively say which one's the best. The 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 only Master System games that I know and have played are Game uh Game Gear games. Yeah. So, we're, no, we're not doing Master System. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Master System, like, didn't count. Yeah, it, it well, it's weird, because it was very niche in the United States, but, like, in Europe and Brazil, it was, like, the Ooh. system to have. Oh. Anybody here from Brazil? Anybody want to help <laughs> us with the best Master System game? Why don't you just DM Izzy real quick. I would just say, uh, I would just say Sonic Chaos. Yeah, that's that. That, but like again, that's that's a to me that's a game, game gear game. game. Yeah. Um. So I I I say we're skipping that. Let's go right to Super okay. Nintendo. Okay. Uh, what what are so what do we got? Uh, we got Super Mario World. We got. A Link to the Past. We got the Mega Man X trilogy. We got Super Castlevania so, 4. I think the best Super Nintendo game is Mega Man X. Mm -hmm. And I think that you think the best Super Nintendo game is Metroid uh, Super Metroid. Yes. <laughs> uh, so are we going to have a little fight here? Uh... Well, uh, we have to pick your... one. Yeah, dude. What, how, are you new here? All right. Um, here's the thing. Both games 
are challenging. Both games can get very unfair. I feel like Super Metroid is more fair. And I think that, Ooh. to me, gives it the edge. Ooh. How, now, I haven't played much Super Metroid, to be completely honest. How mm-hmm. is it uh, trying to navigate the, the map in Super Metroid? It's not, it's not that hard. You like it, it does, it does do a bad job of like keeping things hidden behind like pillars and stuff. And like, it doesn't tell you to like shoot it and like see what to do. But once like you play the game enough, that just becomes instinctual. Like if you get stuck and you have, you have the right uh, missiles just start shooting at the walls and like, it'll tell you what you need to do. Interesting. Um, I would, I would say more like picking up E tanks is more difficult than it should be. Um, wall jumping that game is broken. I'm sorry. It just is. And there's like at least two parts where you need to wall jump. Wait, wait, um, you're talking about super Metroid still. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Cause wall jumping in Mega Man X is awesome and it works <laughs> great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, like it's it's explorative, it's explorative, it's atmospheric, it's uh isol- it's isolating the the mood and tone the game sets. It's very unique for a 16-bit game. Uh the music slaps, the you know, the combat is challenging, but then it gets uh progressively easier as you get more powerful mm-hmm. all the way up until the final boss fight. Um it's it's definitely it's hands down one of the top games of that generation that holds up today just as well as it did back then. Like if you put Super Metroid next to similar games that came out in the past five years, it would it would hold up. I would say most of that stuff about Mega Man X. You say exactly. that Super Metroid has a great soundtrack. Have you even heard Mega Man X's soundtrack? Uh, My I mean, God. <laughs> Spark Mandrill? Holy hell, dude. Look, I don't need to say that Mega Man has a good soundtrack. Everybody knows Mega Man has a good soundtrack. I think people might, you know, take adv- take for granted the fact that Super Metroid also has a great soundtrack. Come on, dude. You can't tell me this isn't... This doesn't slap! It's got bars, dude. All right, so... That... The music is awesome. Uh, uh, my my biggest criticism of Mega Man X is that if you don't know the boss order, it's a really, really hard game. Right. Uh, if you know the boss order, uh, I think that it's, it's pretty forgiving. Um, so... Mm-hmm. I could say the same thing about Super Metroid because it doesn't really tell you where to go. Uh, but I think two things. One, I think it does do a better job of like subtly guiding you to where you need to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and two, that game is infamous for be for being able to sequence break. So like if even if you do screw up and you go the wrong way, there are ways around that. Like you can go, you can like try to find your own unique way to like get out of that situation and progress without getting stuck. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Mega Man X. If you don't do it uh, the easy way, it's go. You're it. It's gonna accidentally punish you for it. <laughs> yeah, I think I like it a lot because of how uh uh because of the challenge that it gives because of, because of a lot of the boss fights and stuff i think the level design is phenomenal it's a lot i mean the levels are linear so it's easier to tell where you're going and stuff but yeah. it's the order of the eight robot masters that might uh trip you up a little bit but again once you find out the order of the eight it's 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 a linear game uh but of course it gets harder and harder as it goes there you can save in it it might be a little hard. You have to write down all the numbers, but you yeah. can save in it. You can um, save in Super Metroid, but you have to go to save rooms, mm-hmm. and those aren't always where you need them to be. Uh, I think that uh, uh, mechanically, 
Mega Man X might be the best game on the Super Nintendo because of how good the 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 how good it feels to move the character around and to jump around and to shoot things and stuff. Uh right. I, I I think it nailed 2D action platforming mechanics at very early on. Um Well I mean, I can say the exact same thing about Super Metroid. I oh, think the but, difference... Oh, I thought dif- you said the wall jumping was bad. Hey, for, forget the wall jumping for two seconds. Two seconds. It's not a major part of the game. The The moment-to-moment combat in it, you know, the standard running and shooting and stuff, works really, really well. Mm-hmm. And it's just... Mega Man is fast-paced. Metroid is much slower taste than right. Mega Man is. But I think that works for this more explorative, more contemplative type of action game. Whereas Mega Man is more or less go to the right, kill everything as fast as you can. Right. I have activated a uh, a poll. So if you're here watching live on Twitch, uh, you can vote and we're just going to use whatever you guys say. We're giving our yeah. case. You guys are the jury. You guys pick between Super Metroid and Mega Man X, those are your two options. We're not allowing you to pick Chrono Trigger. Ew. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy III, also known as Final Fantasy VI in Japan. Best game on the SNES. Ew, dude. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I both of these games are on the Switch. Super Metroid yes. comes with your Nintendo Switch Online subscription. Mega Man X, you got to buy the bundle. Yes. Uh, but it's worth every penny of that bundle. Uh, Bob, Mega Man 7 is the best Mega Man on the Super Nintendo. Better than Mega Man X Trilogy. Uh, no. Mega Man Ew. X is the best <laughs> Mega Man game. Period. Full stop. End of sentence. <laughs> I've never played Mario RPG. I know I'm not going to like it as much as Mega Man X, but yeah. I do kind of want to play it. There's a there's a lot of Super Nintendo games that like are like a big gap in my library. A lot of people say Donkey Kong Country? No. Like I, I like Donkey Donkey yeah. Kong Country's good, but I don't consider it it's more of a technical achievement than anything else. I don't, you know, I, I, I don't even think so. It's just pictures. <laughs> it's just pre-rendered pictures. You know. Well, the, I think I, it, I mean, it is. It was impressive for the time that they got that out of a Super Nintendo, right? So, like, I'll give it that. And the gameplay was like fine enough as it is. I just don't think, compared to all the other platformers on that system, you know, it's in the same league. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a fine game. It's just I'm, we're not calling it best game on the SNES. Yeah. That's for damn sure. Um, uh, Pork Chop says Kirby Dream Course. For real though, that game is awesome. <laughs> I yeah. really like Kirby's Dream Course, and again, that is part of your Nintendo Switch Online subscription. Of course, there's no Zelda in this poll. No, I Link to the Past is really good. I would say it's one of the best uh, SNES games. The best. In the Wolf Den tier list? <laughs> nah. Uh, Yoshi's Island is good, too. Uh, I've never played, like, yeah. that far into Yoshi's Island. I've only gotten past, like, the first two worlds, I think. Uh, Mario World. Yeah, yeah Mario I've... World's really good. But again, I yeah, still Mar- think... Yeah, Mario World is great. Yeah. And I, I'm a Mario guy. And I'm over here telling you Mega Man X is better. <laughs> Uh, is the poll done yet? I can just end the poll. Uh, end yeah. poll. A view results. What do we got, guys? Super Metroid by a large margin here. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> 72% Super Metroid. It's because we're all Nintendo stands here. We're hot off of the, of the Metroid Dread train. You guys are all biased. Whatever, dude. I'll put well, I'll put Super Metroid on there. <laughs> Get this out of here. I'm trying to find. I remember like, like this is when I was in college. This has got to be like a decade ago, even longer than that. Fuck, I'm old. Uh, Games Radar actually did what we what we're doing now, 
listing like the best games for every system. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to find it, but I don't think it's up anymore. Are they going to influence our decisions here? Or are you just want to no, check but our I've... work and say? <laughs> I ju- I'm just curious to see. We could do Metacritic. Like, we could do Metacritic. I'm I'm more like curious to see like if we miss anything or like, you know, if we have a hard time thinking of something. This is our you list. Know. I don't I know. think we're gonna. I don't think we're gonna. I think this is gonna be very easy for us. So yes. like like, actually, you know what? We're calling it B bets, but it's really our favorite. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think so far. We're doing all right. Yeah. The only thing is maybe I might say A Link to the Past might be the best for Super Nintendo. Like I might maybe. I might put that in the ring, but I no, I still think Mega Man X is, is better. Yeah. But anyway, you guys voted for Super Metroid, so I guess I got to say it's Super Metroid. Uh, we're on to Sega Genesis here. Yes. Uh, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Yep. <laughs> So that's it. Moving on. But here's the thing. I don't think uh, like, like they kind of count as one game, but they're not, they're sold separately. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I think it's Sonic three is what it is. I guess it would have to be then. Uh, yep. 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 Cause it is, it is a, it is a much more tighter experience. Mm hmm. I would say like the Sonic Three levels, um, the music's a lot better, right? I, I mean, uh, growing up, I liked Sonic and Knuckles more just because I liked Knuckles, and 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 graphically, yeah. it looked a little more impressive. But uh, they're basically the same game, and, and yeah. Sonic Three had more in it. I felt like, yeah, no, I definitely did. So, uh, yeah, I think I think. Pretty unanimously, Sonic Three. Somebody in the chat said overrated. Yeah. Who am I banning right now? Jay Thomas. Yeah, seriously. Dude, what's up, dude? Uh, no, some people are no. saying some weird shit. Shining Force, uh, NHL '93. Cool spot. <laughs> we know Cool Spot's a meme pick. Cool spot. Uh, uh, oh, you know what? I forgot. What? I I always say this might be the best game. Ninja Gaiden, uh, no, not Ninja Gaiden. No, Shinobi. Shinobi Three. I always say that this might be the best Sega Genesis game. I don't. I mean, that is a. It is really. That good. is a very good game. I don't know that, if I can make it dethrone Sonic Three. I think that they're yeah. very close, though. I mean, if we want to go for like other f- great Genesis games, that could be thrown on there. Uh, Streets of Rage 2. Somebody, um, that was the first thing somebody said in the chat when I put up the picture well, yeah, of, of the Sega Genesis. Fucking incredible game. I don't uh, like Streets of Ups, Ra- I don't think. I, Not the guy. I, He's a great man. I'm, t- <laughs> I'm talking about like the genre because it feels like mashing. I need like a little it bit. Is, I need to feel like I'm in it, control a little bit. Mashing, you know what it is? Like it helps if you're if you play with someone. Because it's yeah. that camaraderie of like trying to get through everything together, like really helps. But there are good like single player beat 'em ups that you can play. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like uh, the original Renegade is pretty good, and that's a single player beat 'em up. Okay, so uh, yeah. yeah, Shinobi Three, I love it. I think it's right up there. But I think we gotta, if we're talking about best, we gotta give it a Sonic Three. Yeah. It, I would pick Shinobi over Sonic 2, but that's not what we're, what we're here about. I mean, I don't know. I still think Sonic 2 is like a top five Genesis game, honestly. Because mm-hmm. it's. Yeah, no, definitely. I, yeah. I, I, it's up there. Yeah. Is is PlayStation next? Uh, Yeah. Next or do we got to play Sega Saturn? <laughs> I don't know any Saturn games. Uh, there's Knights or Panzer Dragoon. That's that's all I know. <laughs> yeah, we're not. We're not doing. Give it to one of them. I bet you Panzer Dragoon would win. What what's the uh yeah. what's the one I keep wanting to play? Uh, 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 On Saturn. Yeah, it's got such a it's such a dope name. 
Uh, Burning uh, Rangers. Oh, yeah. I want to play that. It looks really cool. Anyway. Uh, we're going right to PlayStation 1, baby. And why is it Metal Gear Solid? Um, because it just is. It was the you know, <laughs> one of the first to really do great cinematic storytelling. It was one of the first to have, like, an accomplished voice cast. I mean, games have had voice casts before, but, like, not at this level. Um, it took an old style of video game and made it, like, modern and better it had one of the most complex stories and mature <laughs> stories uh, still to era. this day <laughs> still to this day yeah so yeah metal gear solid courting acrobats is crash bandicoot and i think other people have probably said crash bandicoot i feel like that's like the obvious yeah. Like 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 that's just the 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 normie choice, you know? Cuz it's the That's the popular title. vote. That's yeah, the popular it, vote. Yeah. Game's not that good, got to say. <laughs> I don't mean, I would not be in my top 5 uh PlayStation games. Yeah. I don't think. Now Final Fantasy 7 would be up there for best. But this is the Wolf mm. list and we got we got yeah. the freaking Metal Gear baby, Metal Gear. Uh great. I'm seeing Resident Evil 2. Ooh, uh, that Yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's a good that's that's yes. a very good pick. See, I we play that on the N64. <laughs> I know, that's why we screwed up. Uh speaking of games we played on the N64, I'm also seeing Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk is definitely up there also. Definitely up there. Um I think Re as, Resident Evil had a huge impact on us. Yes. Uh, I think Metal Gear's impact was longer lasting. I think Metal Gear's impact was longer lasting and probably wider reaching. Mm -hmm. You know, because like I think it have, like more people took inspiration from that than Resident Evil, uh, especially like the early Resident Evil games. I think mainly horror games might have taken inspiration from Resident Evil, but everything took inspiration from Metal Gear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry to the Final Fantasy people because I really do think yes. that Final Fantasy 7 is probably up there. And if we wanted to be like an IGN and take a committee of people, I think that Final Fantasy 7 would probably make it. Uh, yeah. But we like Metal Gear a lot here. So Metal Gear gets yeah. it. Uh, N64? Uh, Goldeneye. Goldeneye? Yes. I think <laughs> Perfect Dark is the better Goldeneye. Ah. <sighs> I would agree, except I don't like the multiplayer as much, and Perfect Dark runs at two frames a second, <laughs> whereas Goldeneye can at least usually hit 30. So I'll give it to you there. I think the multiplayer is better for in Goldeneye for two reasons. One, the characters. They're fun. Yes. The guns mm -hmm. are fun because it's all recognizable, you know, James Bond stuff. And the atmospheres are recognizable James Bond stuff. But also, yeah. if the game runs at a low frame rate, it runs even lower when you make it split screen. Yes. So, also, also GoldenEye's multiplayer is so much simpler than Perfect Dark's. Perfect Dark, there's like so many more modes, so many different types of multiplayer. And it's got all these weird guns and stuff. With all secondary firing options, so I just think for simplicity's sake, Goldeneye has the much better multiplayer. So wait, we're putting Goldeneye on here over Mario sixty four? Yes. <laughs> no, I think Mario sixty four yes. is much better than Goldeneye. No, <laughs> and still to this day, a better game. I no. <laughs> I also uh, listen. I shit on Ocarina of Time a lot. Yeah, it is a very good game. <laughs> it is. I understand once you know what why. you're doing. Yeah, once you figure out what to do, I I could see why, like a twelve year old would think it's like just absolutely mind blowing because you just walk around in a yeah. circle for like eight hours, and <laughs> then on that ninth hour, you go into a door and there's a whole new world to explore. Yeah, and then you walk around there for eight hours. 
and then you press a button, and then there's a whole new world to explore. Yeah. And the game just never fucking ends. <laughs> <laughs> so I I understand why people would like Ocarina of Time a lot. Um, yeah. I really think Mario's over Goldeneye. I might have to throw this to the polls. All right. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we got another poll for you. We got another poll, boys. Uh, new poll. Best N64 Goldeneye Mario. Go for it, boys. It we, is we in will also accept, the Twitch We will chat. also accept write-in votes for win back. <laughs> and only win back. And only win back. Now, I feel like this chat's going to be a little biased, bi- a bi- bias towards Mario 64, gotta say. Yeah, I, I already sense I'm going to lose this one. <laughs> I've been learning how to speedrun Mario 64. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, because on Sunday, 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 I have a big speedrun race with our buddy Jackson. Uh, oh, that's right. I, I'm, I, I've been practicing off stream. I've only mm-hmm. done like five runs in my entire life, and I'm already three seconds behind his best pace. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so it should be an interesting Sunday. I enjoyed both. You can enjoy both of these games. They're both very, yeah. very good games. I just think that uh, Mario 64 holds up a lot more and had a bigger impact on me. Uh. Louis Beck, you are smoking rocks if you don't say Star Fox is the best N64 game. Star Fox is really good, too. Yeah. Star Fox, uh, I think, might have held up the best out of any N64 game. It might have. Yeah. You know, the move, the movement in that is not as, you know, it doesn't need to be as precise as, like, a lot of other games do. I had a really good time with that on the 3DS. Yes. When they re-released it, I was like, I was not expecting to play it as much as I did. Yeah. People are saying Smash Bros. Smash Bros. is really good, too. Yeah. But we haven't gotten to the GameCube yet. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Mario 64 is obviously going to win. Most people here never played GoldenEye, just like MMX. Uh, yeah, I feel like more people here definitely played Super Metroid. I it's a shame that not as many people got to experience Goldeneye because it's not as available yeah. anymore to people. Yeah, it's it sucks that it's not as available. I mean, it was like the third or fourth best selling game on the N sixty four. So like millions and millions and millions of people have played this game, but you know, there's a whole there's like a whole two generations of people who haven't. Because no one, nobody can get the rights to it. I thought we were at a tie, but no. Uh, Mario yeah. beat it seventy six percent, just like that's like around uh, what uh, yeah Super Metroid did. All right, so there you go. Uh, yeah, Golden Eye, get out of here, lose it, Pierce Brosnan, beat it. Next, we're going to do... What? Oh, we got... This is, is Xbox? Next is... No, next is Dreamcast. Dreamcast. This is obvious. This one's obvious. Is it? Oh, are you going to pull a wild card here? I think I'm pulling a wild card. Ooh, okay. So, hold on. I would... Uh, yo, yo. You ever try to copy and paste something on Windows, bro? <laughs> Yeah, control C, control V. Hey, what an experience it is. I have to like go into the whole Wikipedia article just to copy something. Anyway. <laughs> uh I mean why is it not uh Sonic Adventure 2? Because it's Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur, no. It, it, yes. Power yes. Stone is better than Soul Calibur. Power Stone 2 uh, is better I, than Soul Calibur. Power Stone 2 is a fantastic game, but no, the answer is Soul Calibur. It is a... First of all, Soul Calibur is a launch game for the Dreamcast, but it's the best-looking game on the Dreamcast still. One. Two, it is one of the best-handling 
fighting games to this day, to the point where every other Soul Calibur game still feels like Soul Calibur 1. They, they barely changed it. Uh, the fact that it's one of the few games to get a 10 out of 10 from every publication at a time when they didn't just ha they only handed it out to Ocarina a time and Soul Calibur. It it is a it is a landmark in 3D fighters. It is a landmark in video games. It is a landmark for the Dreamcast as a whole. It is the defining game of the Sega Dreamcast. But it was on every wasn't it on every console. No. I uh, on new poll. Soul Calibur versus Power Stone 2 because I think that if we put Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Adventure would would fucking sweep it. Well, yeah. I I want to see what the chat thinks about Power Stone 2 versus Soul Calibur. Now, just remember, just just remind everybody. There are no bad Dreamcast games. <laughs> There are just levels of good Dreamcast games. The Dreamcast had a fantastic library. Sonic Adventure games, uh, Crazy Taxi, uh, Soul Calibur, Power Stone 1 and 2, Jet Grind Radio! I see a lot of Crazy uh, often, Taxi. Often had the best versions of some of those, of some third-party games, like uh, the Tony Hawk games, uh, Activision Spider-Man. Uh, what was that? one that i can't remember oh oh code veronica resident evil code veronica um the the 2k sports series was actually very good and a, a, a the only competition madden and ea has ever had so whatever your favorite marvel vs. capcom 2 of course whatever your favorite game on the dreamcast is you're right um so, but so if we had to pick one some people are confused about Power Stone 2. Let me educate you a little bit. Power Stone 2 is Super Smash Brothers if it was 3D. So yes. up, up to the ultimate moves. Well, what do you call them in Smash Brothers? Final Smash. Final Smash. Up to the final smashes. Well, you, every character turns into like a like a super form of themselves when they get enough yeah. Power Stones. Um <laughs> You get you get three like emeralds that draw. It has items. It's a fighting. It's a three D fighting game with items, uh, and and environmental hazards and stuff. Um, you, you some of the items are emeralds. You pick up three of them and you turn into like the super form of your character, and they all have their own super move also. Um, and it's like a party brawler. It's great. Hey, Will and Bob, isn't Resident Evil Two on the Dreamcast too? Is it? Uh, I don't think it is. I know three is. I don't. I don't know about two. It yeah, might I don't be two being on there. I know. I, I know three definitely is. Uh, I do think the Dreamcast has a lot of the better versions of 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 the ports. I yeah. will say that thing is loud. <laughs> it's very loud. It is. It might be the loudest system I've ever owned. I don't some know, people... the PlayStation 4 gets very loud. Yeah, mine never did. A lot of people talk about how loud the PlayStation 4 gets, but ours wasn't really that bad. No, mine get, mine get, get, get pretty loud, depending on the game. Uh, all right, where's the poll at? We got to end this. Uh... All right. Uh... Damn, Soul, Soul Calibur. Calibur. With the most I've ever seen, 82%. You guys are dumb. Whatever. I'll just play Power Stone 2 by myself. If you don't know what Power Stone 2 is, look up a trailer. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. You guys are missing out. Yeah. Well, it's a shame that that hasn't been ported to anything. If it was ported to the, the PSP. So bust <laughs> out your PSPs. Um, now we're doing Xbox. Are we on Xbox yet? Uh... Well, if we want to go in release order, it'd be PS2, then GameCube, then Xbox. Wow. Okay. PlayStation 2. Uh, so, like, Burnout uh, Takedown? <laughs> I feel like we can't give this to anything other than Grand Theft Auto 3. Maybe Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Uh, no. Because, well, 
I mean, think about it. Like that was not just the game for the PS2. That was the game for the entire generation. You know, no, no other game like was like a a water cooler game where like everyone played it and everybody had an experience with it. You know, the fact that after Grand Theft, there was before Grand Theft Auto and after Grand Theft Auto. Just you know, because it's one everyone of those was talking games. about it doesn't mean it's the best. Just means all the freaking mouth breathers like it. I mean, sometimes popular things are popular for a reason, and then that was that was one of the reasons. I mean, I'll tell you what my favorite PlayStation Two game is. I totally forgot. It's Metal Gear Solid Three. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Like there are other good PS Two games out there. There's MGS Three. There's Burnout. Of uh, there, uh, what the hell is that one game? Uh, God of War was on there. The original God of War. So, so you're which which Grand Theft Auto are you saying? Uh, I would say three. Uh, th- well, yeah, yeah. I think of all of them. Yeah, yeah. We'll just we'll just go three. Yeah, I, I know some also... people will say Vice City is better, but I think I'm just gonna I'll go with three. I'll also remind you that Resident Evil Four is on this console. Yeah, so. That's the problem. From here forward, my answer is going to be Resident Evil 4 for all of them. (laughs) Um, But I'm going to reserve that for the best GameCube game when we get to GameCube. All right, I'll give you Grand Theft Auto 5. Uh, 3. 3? Yeah. I'll give you Grand Theft Auto 3. I mean, I only played a little bit of it at a friend's house. (laughs) Yeah. My personal favorite still, uh, uh, you know, the Metal Gears. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we're doing GameCube. And it's Resident Evil 4. Next! What about... What about what? What, oh, what about, about Melee? Rogue Leader, the... dude? Not as good as Rogue Squadron. What? Yep. No, it's Rogue better. Rogue Squadron it's... was better. No, Rogue Squad. Not. Rogue Squadron 1 is better. Smash Brothers Ultimate is better. Uh, Metroid Prime is probably the only competition. Uh, Eternal Darkness is probably up there too, but it's Resident Evil 4 next next system. Will saying some things that I want to distance myself from. I'll say <laughs> though that uh, Ultimate is better than Melee. I will I will agree with you on that. I think that people really are holding it onto the past on that one. Yeah. Uh, I'm breaking Photoshop right now. <laughs> uh, Resident Evil 4 is incredible. Yeah. Um, I do think Melee is really good, though. I think Melee is, is... I mean, it is... Melee is a good game. Rogue Leader is a good game. Those are all good games, but Resident Evil 4 is... There are games before Resident Evil 4 and after Resident Evil 4. It's one of those kind of games. <laughs> people are saying... People are saying some weird stuff. <laughs> uh, Twilight Princess? No. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Sun- Super Mario Sunshine. Mario Sunshine's good. Uh, there are better games for sure. Yeah. Uh, Metal Gear Solid uh, Twin saw- Snakes, though. Oh uh, yeah, that's kind of up there, though. That, that's that's good. I did see a really good meme. You know that meme that's been going around. It's a sad guy on a bus next to a happy guy on the bus. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. There's there was one that was like the sad the the happy guy on the bus was thinking about playing Super Mario Sunshine and then the sad guy is like playing Mario Sunshine. I liked that one. Yeah, that was that a was good a good one. one. That might be the tweet of the week because I forgot to grab one. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll we'll go. We're gonna go with Resident Evil Four. Damn yeah, right, we're gonna go. With Resident it Evil is 4. it is it is very good. And if I do a poll, yeah. everyone's gonna pick. Not Resident Evil 4, because it's not exactly yeah. the popular opinion. Um, uh, also, Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. I played that on PC back in the day. Yeah, that's a PC game. Uh, Mario Strikers is also really good. I played that way after it came out. That is good. Uh, there's a lot of you know, good... Uh, Time Splitters 2, the best version, might be the GameCube version. Um, I think my top three GameCube games might be Resident Evil 4, uh, Melee, and uh, uh, Rogue Leader. Mine would probably be Resident Evil 4, Metroid Prime, and Twin Snakes. 
Oh, I forgot about Twin Snakes. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know where I would. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I would. Put I mean, it. but that's the thing. Like, there's so many great games for it. I think this generation, like, it had so many more quality games on it as compared to the other two systems that had a higher quantity of games, but not necessarily the same. Like, you know, good good games to bad game ratio. Uh, so which Halo is is the best Xbox game? <laughs> Probably two. Uh, Because Halo 1, good, but uh, driving that game is abysmal. And at at the midpoint of the game, you literally have to do the entire game backwards, but now with zombies. I gotta be honest, the driving in... In Halo Infinite's a great game. The driving is still bad. It's like really oh. bad. You you oh, you. I... In order to move forward, you pl- you press forward on the thumbstick. <laughs> that is how you Wait, control what? the the vehicle in Halo. To move forward, you press forward. Yes. Isn't that every game? No, in a vehicle. You're in a oh. car. And you got to move the camera with the uh, the right stick. Uh, I think because in Halo, in the original Halo, they put first person controls onto vehicles. It's kind of like first that. person shooter controls onto vehicles. It's been how many years, and they haven't <laughs> <know>. fixed that. <laughs> it's it's every time I get into a vehicle in in uh in Infinite, I'm like, oh boy. Oh, no. And I think the worst part about Halo 1 was that the, the climax of it, the very last thing you do is you have to escape from an exploding spaceship in a vehicle down a narrow path. Yeah. And there are jumps. <laughs> I didn't I don't think I've ever played Halo 2. I think I wait, the Halo 1 has co-op, right? Think so? I played one. No, of Halo. Them. 2, Halo Two has co-op. All right, I played Halo, Halo Two has co-op. Then. I, I, played, Halo I only played Halo Two. Then I never played Halo. 1. I played Halo One like for two seconds, like the multiplayer. But Halo I played, Two, I played a I've, decent amount. I've actually played the entire campaign of Halo One in the Master Chief Collection, mm. but I just remember, in terms of multiplayer, having more fun with Halo Two because they gave you the sword. <laughs> okay. But. Uh. All right, where are we at now? Uh, 360, PS3, and Wii. Xbox 360. That was the first of the generation, right? Yes. All right, Xbox 360 is one of my favorite consoles. Yes. So, I'm as trying flawed to think. as it is. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's a great system once they figured out how to stop it from red ringing. I'm trying to. So I would pick Red Dead Redemption. Ooh. But I don't know if that's best representative of the system as a whole. No, it, that doesn't matter. Representation of the system right. don't matter. We're picking the best game on the system. Bullshit. So then stop. I guess I guess we'll have to give it to. But then the problem is because Red Dead Redemption is also on the PS3. So. Well, my pick was going to be Modern Warfare 2. Hmm. So, okay. But that's that's a little different because Modern Warfare was so closely associated right. with 360. Right. Red Dead Redemption really have that kind of, you know, slight alignment with one console or another. Yeah, I think Call of Duty... Uh... Back on the Xbox 360 days, uh, uh, games that heavily used Xbox Live or, or, or just, just the online multiplayer, uh, they kind of uh, had like like deals to push the Xbox version more than the PlayStation version. So yeah. uh, Call of Duty was one of them. It, it, it used the online and the PlayStation had free online at the time, but everyone was like, yeah. everyone was like, nah, Xbox's online is better. So they were just willing to yeah. pay for it. <laughs> That's how good the marketing was. Um, mm-hmm. 
I think that uh, if we're talking about a staple for the console, I think that uh, uh, Call of Duty, uh, uh, because of its online multiplayer, it it it, uh, it 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 was a bigger deal on the Xbox. I think that uh, Red yeah. Dead Redemption, it's a phenomenal game. It's definitely one of the best games of the generation. Uh, I think people. I think that leans a little towards the PlayStation 3 because uh, uh, Rockstar. Maybe, but at the same time, Grand Theft Auto 4 got DLC first on Xbox. So that was like the start oh. of the generation where like people were like starting to switch alignments. Right. So I, I, I still think... Uh, uh, Modern Warfare Two is is the is the game of the of the 360. As much as I like Res, uh, Red Dead Redemption, I'm inclined to agree with you, but I wouldn't. I I could make the argument for the first Modern Warfare, but I think I think you're right, and I will concede to to Modern Warfare Two. Okay. I think PlayStation Three is going to be a little interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, because I feel like we might lean towards an exclusive there. Yeah, well, PS, that was the generation where Sony like eventually like really buckled down and start getting like the the prestige exclusives, mm -hmm. like the Uncharted games, The Last of Us, uh, God of War three, uh, Little Big Planet, Uh, infamous infamous 2 is a very good game so we were xbox boys until pretty late in the life cycle um yes i didn't play many uh ps3 games uh one of the ones i played pretty extensively was uh metal gear solid 4 <laughs> we're yes. just going through all the metal gears today but i don't necessarily know if metal gear solid 4 is like the best game on the system. I don't even know if it's like one of the best Metal Gear games, to be honest. No, it's one of my least favorite. It's a really good yeah. game. Uh, yeah. But it's probably like my fourth. Like It's probably like number four. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. Might even be the my least favorite of, of, of all of them because I forgot about two. Two's good, but I don't know. Two, no, two is good. I think two people just give two crap because of... Um, of the ride and switch. Whereas I know a lot of people look think at the, that that's their favorite. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it now, the ride and switch is nothing. Like, games do that all the time. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know about PlayStation 3. All of these consoles, by the way, if you Google, like, PlayStation 3 games or whatever, all of them have had Resident Evil 4 in the list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the list of games. Well, yeah. Are there any indie games I'm like forgetting about? For the PS3, no. Indie yeah. games weren't really a thing on PS3. That's true. I mean, they had them, but Oh, The Last of Us. Yeah. I think I think that's this I think that's it. Either that or Uncharted 2. Oh. I I would will. I would probably go up with Uncharted 2 because Uncharted 2 is like definitely the best version of that series. Oh, we're and... going to the polls. Okay. Which Naughty Dog game is your favorite? You said Uncharted 2? Yeah, Uncharted 2. You 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 liked The Last of Us, but you had a lot of problems with The Last of Us. I just could, well, I think because I had played the I played the Uncharted trilogy, and I think The Last of Us felt too similar to the Uncharted trilogy See, for a game the, that was just, it was trying to be something completely different. I did the opposite. I played The Last of Us first, and then I played uh, yeah Uncharted three, I think. And then I will I, say I that bit, I got like halfway through four, and uh, and I was like, it's good. <laughs> four could have been on the PS three. There's no reason why why it was on PS4. Um, I will say The Last of Us Two did a better job of differentiating itself from Uncharted in terms of gameplay, mm -hmm. um, and in terms of just just depressing the fuck out of you. <laughs> uh, 
um yeah i don't know what else in terms of uh playstation 3 i mean grand theft auto 5 uh right Theft Auto five uh arkham asylum true. i would put up there yeah that's that's about it um so i guess we're just waiting on you guys to pick one yeah Damn it. uh journey i've never beat journey i uh I did. I fell asleep playing it. <laughs> I was pl- I played it like after class one day, and I uh, I just fell asleep. I Journey know. Journey was a weird game because like for the most part, like I was just breezing through it, and then it got to the end, and now like all of a sudden, I f- I like got a visceral reaction. I felt I felt cold and alone, and like I could <laughs> die at that moment. My God. So, and I so, played it like years after it came out and there were still people playing the game. <laughs> so that game company uh, has a free-to-play game right now. Uh, Child? No. What is it called? Oh, What's it called? Yeah, I know. Somebody tell know me in the chat what it's about. called. It's actually pretty good. Uh, and Sky? Is it called Sky? It's I. It's actually pretty good. Uh, it's got the similar sort of thing where like uh, uh, you're playing with other people. So it's kind of basically mm-hmm. just Journey. But there's more of a social aspect. Sky Children of Light. That's what it's called. I was going to say Child oh, yeah, of Light, yeah, yeah. but that's a different game. That's, that's a, a different game. game. Uh, I want to play more of Sky Children of Light. I, I only played a little bit, but I actually kind of liked what I played. And I think it's a mobile game, too. You can play it on your phone. Yeah, it is. Um, anyway. No Rock Band? <laughs> you know, I... I did. I did think about Rock Band, but I love Rock Band so much. But God, it, that moment has passed so hard. Yeah. No, it, it it fizzled out real quick. Yeah, and it, and it sucks that it did because that that game was fantastic. The Last of Us. I'm gonna end the poll because we got to move on. But The Last of Us All only right. won by sixty three percent. Wow, that's the, that's the closest we've had one today so far. I think. Yeah. Um. All right, so uh, Uncharted goes bye bye. Yeah, rip. So what's next? What's what's next? The Wii. The Wii. The Wii. Is it Galaxy or is it Wii Sports? <laughs> it's Wii Sports. So Mario Galaxy is okay. awesome. Uh, it's really good. So here, here's my story with Mario Galaxy. I've only played Mario Galaxy in the all-stars collection i still haven't even beaten it i've gotten right. pretty far but i haven't beaten it yet um mario galaxy 2 i played in gamestop for about two hours we closed the store and i was waiting for a midnight release of something uh-huh. whenever that game came out it was probably a call of duty or maybe skyrim or one of those yeah um so it was the midnight release of one of those things, and we had two hours to kill, and I was like, everybody's saying this is a 10 out of 10 game. Yeah, right. And then I played it, and I was like, this game's really good. <laughs> so it is really good. Uh, but yeah. I think I think Wii Sports is is the best game on the console, hands down. Yeah, it, it is. It Yeah, it definitely is. I don't think I'm going to put the box art for this one. I think I'm just going to put this guy. <laughs> Matt. I think Matt's going there. Everyone knows. Everyone knows Matt. Yeah, the, the threatening aura of Matt right here. <laughs> um, I hate Wii Sports. This Q73 power. Why did you suck at it? Yeah, I do think Mario Galaxy is really good, but Wii Sports is just... yeah. Mario Galaxy is very good. Um, Wii Sports is just the one that you pl- that you play all the time. It's just the this is the go to. Yeah, it's the and essential it works. game. That's the thing. It worked. It worked really well. I think Nintendo really dropped the ball by not having an equivalent. They should have just packaged in one, two switch. That game is not that good to be yeah. paying $50 for. If they package that thing yeah. in, I think a lot more people would like one, two switch. Yeah. Um, somebody said Twilight Princess again. <laughs> uh, somebody said Resident Evil 4 on, again. And look, this, the Wii version is a damn fine version of the game the wii u is next right yes 
Uh, there's not much here. <laughs> no, not much at all. Mario Maker. Oh, duh. Duh. That's it. End of, end, of, end of story. I'm glad we could come to an agreement, Will. Although Breath of the Wild it's, is on the Wii U. <laughs> true. But Mario Maker is the only game I can think of that actually utilizes the stupid touchscreen gimmick well. <laughs> you don't like Zombie U? No. Uh, people are saying Splatoon, Super Mario 3D World. Mario 3D World was good, but I think that Mario Maker just knocks it out of the park. Yeah. There, there's so, and I think that Mario Maker One is a better game than Mario Maker Two. I, I, I think now they added a lot of good stuff in Mario Maker Two, so it's get it's a lot closer yeah. now. They might be just as good as each other, but I think Mario Maker One with all of the different, uh, 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 all the different mystery mushrooms and stuff, it's a better game. And I yeah. think the Hunter Mario like the- Challenge is better than the Endless. And I think just in terms of like creating the levels, the fact that you had the tablet there and you could, you know, more easily pick and choose what you want and where to lay them, I think goes a long way. Yeah, it's pretty much required to make levels in uh in portable mode on the Switch. Yeah. Star Fox was clearly the best Wii, Wii U game. Again, y'all smoking rocks. I played that at E3, <laughs> and I and the other lady said, so, what'd you think? And I said, that ain't it, man. I didn't like, like that at all. Um, Kirby's Epic Yarn was fun. Did I play that? No, I didn't play that. Yoshi's Woolly World, I did not like, because that game is for little baby boys. <laughs> I see uh, Mario Kart 8. Um, I think we can officially say that that's a Switch game now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Xbox One is next, right? Uh, PS4 and then Xbox One. Really? Yeah. Okay. Why does Peppa I think Pig that's right. for PS4 come up? <laughs> so, PlayStation 4. Four games. This is the only one without a white background. I can't have that happen. Uh, Spider Man. No, it can't be Spider Man. There's got to be something better than that. I don't know. This generation, like to me, I had a very hard time, like thinking of like the big standout games because there wasn't a Red Dead Redemption level game for me it wasn't a golden eye level game it was a... <laughs> like my favorite games of this generation or like all games i played before in some form or another mm-hmm. like spider-man like resident evil 2 like uh wolfenstein like hitman why so... not god of war i really didn't think it was that good i think people god of war was fine <laughs> <laughs> like it's a good game, but I don't think I don't think it's the genre defining masterpiece that everyone says it was. The the combat was overcomplicated. The world level the world was too big for the type of game they were trying to tell. Um Yeah. There you go. Wow, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I really I'm kinda disappointed in this generation, honestly. There's yeah, really not, not... And, it's, it, and it's the same story on Xbox. <laughs> same story on Xbox One. A lot of people are saying Bloodborne. I have never played Bloodborne, but I feel like if I, I have... did, I would agree with you. Yeah. I played Sekiro, and that game's sick. Yeah. Uh, Fortnite? <laughs> <laughs> Should we pick Fortnite? I don't. I don't want to. Spider Man was good. Grand Theft Auto Five. Uh, I didn't play it on there because I played it on PS3 and I refused to buy it. Again. Yeah. I'm. I'm, ha- I'm. I'm having a hard time here, boys. I mean, Warzone. Yeah. But then, but then I picked it up on Xbox. So I've been playing it on Xbox. Yeah. I don't. Rocket League, The Witcher. What are the games? Oh, uh, friggin' Metal Gear Five. <laughs> Metal Gear 5 was my favorite. Uh, no, I 
I did not like Metal Gear Five. I know you did not. I I was. It hurts me. It hurts that I did not like that game as much as I thought I would. I really, I, I really, I really don't know what to do about PlayStation Four. But maybe we should just yeah. move on to Xbox One. But I, it's the same story on over on Xbox One. I don't know what to pick. Right. So, so I have the Metacritic yeah. here for uh, PlayStation Four. Hmm. Top PlayStation 4 games. Why does it have an 85? There's no way. What? So I have the... It says top PlayStation 4 games by Metascore, and the top one has an 85? No. This must be recent. This has to be Blaine, recent. Son of Crimson? <laughs> How do I sort this by... Like all time. See all maybe. Uh, new releases, all releases. Here we go, baby. Red Dead Redemption two ninety seven, Grand Theft Auto five ninety seven, Persona five Royale mm. ninety five, The Last of Us Remastered ninety five. I think The Last of Us Remastered is kind of up there, but again. Played it on PlayStation 3. Played it on PS3, yeah. God of War 94. God of War is, I mean, it's up there. Uh, the Last of Us Part 2, 93. Persona 5, mm-hmm. 93. Metal Gear Solid 5. What about Metal Gear Ground Zeroes, Will? I mean, Ground Zeroes is technically just a demo. Yeah, but I, well, I mean, it's a short game, and it's cheap. Yeah. But the Phantom Pain is the full game. Oh, duh. Destiny 2. Duh. No. Yeah. Uh-uh. No. Yep. No. I yep. single-handedly blame that game for ruining the Avengers game. <laughs> I think Destiny 2 is is the best PlayStation 4 game. No. Hard well, no. give me another game then. I did. I said Spider-Man right at the top. I don't think that is up there at all. All right. It's poll think- time, baby. It's poll, poll time. time. Poll time. New poll, baby. Best PlayStation. Uh, What is this? Four? Game. PlayStation 4. Spider-Man. Uh, Destiny 2. Wait, no. Destiny 1, actually. I'm, I'm dumb. Oh, wow. That's it. I feel like that's even worse. Destiny 1. I think Destiny 1 was better. And I think year one, Destiny 1, was better than all the other ones. Uh, have have fun, boys. <laughs> what else? Oh, also Rezogun. You want to just call it and say Rezogun? <laughs> no. No. Rezogun was, was one of my favorites. Rezogun was good, but I'm so happy we're past the fact where everyone... That, that became a meme of like, yo, Rezogun, best next-gen game. It was. For the first, like, year. <laughs> there was, like, nothing in, in the beginning of that generation. <laughs> um, Yeah, I'm going through this list, and there's really nothing. This is, this is a really... It's a really dead generation. Even though there's so many games. There's so many games. They're all so mid. So many great games. Listen, if I played Bloodborne, I bet you I would I would fight really hard for Bloodborne. But I didn't play it, so I can't. Um, Bob, did you play Ghost of Tsushima? No, I have it, and I really wanted to play it. Uh, I correction, play it. I have it. You let me borrow, but I haven't played it yet. <laughs> <laughs> the Witcher Three is really good. I do. I I did like the very little time we spent with The Witcher Three. Does Bob thought Destiny could win? What is Destiny getting absolutely destroyed? Um. The important thing Whoa. is that we survive. Okay, ending this poll, I guess it's <laughs> Spider-Man. God, guys, Destiny 1 was awesome. So People spent thousands of hours in that game and were like, Destiny sucks. When are you logging on next? We got to play some time. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess Spider-Man. All right. Take so it move, easy, Jonah. 
moving on to Xbox, what do we got? Um, it's a similar situation. I mean, and the problem is Xbox didn't really have like exclusives. The exclusives they had were like, you know, they had Halo, they had Gears, they had Forza, and then they had shit like Quantum Break, which is right. which is good, but I would say, I wouldn't put it anywhere near this list. They had Recore, which was, you know, no, I don't know what the hell that was. Hell no. Nah. Cuphead, Cuphead. Oh uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say Cuphead. You're gonna go with Cuphead. I'm not gonna stop you, but only because I don't know what else could go there. I think Cuphead's a good a good. Uh, uh, after seeing the the hard time we had with PlayStation Four, I think Cuphead is Cuphead's a uh, one of the reasons I bought an Xbox One to begin with. It was between that right. and PUBG, and PUBG <laughs> is definitely in no universe is that the best <laughs> game on the Xbox One. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm I'm inclined to give it to give it right to Cuphead. Okay. People are saying, but Forza. there's I, again, I, I would I would. <laughs> I would uh, uh, say Forza might be up there, but again, I never played it. So, and there's like so many great third-party games. There's Hitman. There's uh, Resident Evil Two. There's Resident Evil Seven. Uh, there's Doom. There's Wolfenstein: The New Order. Uh, yeah, damn. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's Cuphead. There's, there's good games. There's good games. There's great games, but I don't. I, I don't know if there's any one that I could say like is the game you know x x i think the closest one we got is cuphead because this was the generation yeah. where xbox kind of stopped caring about exclusive stuff yeah um and you know what about... cuphead is at least like visually different enough pan Rizzo said we forgot about fall guys ah you know what fall guys is ah. up there for playstation 4 also yeah um all right, uh, we're getting towards the end here. Oh, switch, duh. Yeah, switch. Um, we just we know what we decided the best switch game. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> we have we have a definitive list where we decided the best switch game. Do we? I forgot. Did we do that? Uh, didn't we? I don't know. We I think we have two different versions of a switch tier list. No, I don't remember doing that. Well, so in the past, I feel like I might have said Breath of the Wild. Currently, I I've, might say Smash Ultimate. I always go back and forth between Breath of the Wild and uh, Odyssey, Mario Odyssey. I go between those two also, but I think I think there's a good. Uh, I think Smash has a good fighting chance. But I guess I guess Breath of the Wild is more universal. Yeah. Well, well that's no, why I feel like I don't, Odyssey. I don't know. Odyssey, I think, is the more universal out of all of them. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, because oh, yeah. Odyssey is a Ultimate is good and it, it's it's pick up and play, but there's a lot going on and it can be very off putting to somebody who doesn't no uh fighting games and in particular the smash style of fighting breath of the wild is very like relaxing and like just easy to dive into and get lost but that can be very intimidating for a lot of people right uh odyssey i feel like is just um all around uh the best game for everyone all skill sets all types of people i left it up to another poll Okay. It's between Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, and Ultimate. Okay. I used to say it was Odyssey, oh, even over Breath of the Wild, because of uh, 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 I I do think that Odyssey is is easier to get your hands on and, and play through. Uh, I think you can spend mm -hmm. more time in Breath of the Wild, but I don't think that makes it better. Um, however, I think that Smash Ultimate you can spend more time in that than both of them. 
uh, and it's a good multiplayer game. You can bring other people into it. And even though it's a simple concept, it's just a fighting game. There's so yeah. much in that game that could that could keep you there and keep you unlocking stuff and building characters yeah. and stuff. And, and you you could just be there forever. Uh, there's a lot of weird, nuanced stuff you can do that you wouldn't expect. Um, so, yeah, I think Smash Bros. is a good contender also. But I completely understand why anybody would say Breath of the Wild or Odyssey. Yeah. Forgot about Super Mario Sunshine and 3D All-Stars. We didn't forget. <laughs> uh, I'm going to prep ourselves for... What's next? Xbox One? No, Xbox... Uh, series. No. Yeah. Okay. After Switch, it's Series X and S and then PS5. Right, 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 right. But do we do those? Because it's way too early. Uh, I think we do. And I haven't I think played... I have not played a PS5 game and or a Series X game for that matter because I don't have either system. And like, is there a is there even like a, an X a Series X game? Because they're all also on Xbox One. Don't worry, Will. You can defer to me. <laughs> I'll just defer to you F for Xbox One. Oh, I'm sorry. This is all very confusing. For Xbox Series, the best game is Call of Duty Warzone. Okay. And for, although although Halo Infinite's getting up there now, uh, yeah. the best PlayStation Five game, there is none. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Spider Man Miles Morales is great. Uh. Demon oh, yeah, Souls. Oh, yeah, because now it's okay to pick a Spider Man game. Now it is, because there's fucking nothing else. Demon Souls is good. Um, what else did I even freaking play? Barely broke out my freaking PlayStation. Uh, did you play Returnal? Yeah, that is a good game, but. Uh, I, oh, a Astro's Playroom, dude. Chris BX knows what's up. Astro's Playroom is, is, is lit. There you go. Uh, how's our poll doing? Um, Smash Brothers is not making it out alive. Oh, no. You said everyone's here and everyone is dead? Yep. Except Kirby for some reason. <laughs> uh, Breath of the Wild by a long shot. Breath okay. of the Wild. Yeah. I, I, I feared this would happen. Yeah. All right. So it only took us an hour and a half, but we got there. There you go. We did it. The the definitive list. So let's go through this whole list right now real quick. For yeah. the NES, we have Super Mario Bros. 3. For the Super Nintendo, we have Super Metroid. For the Sega Genesis, we have Sonic the Hedgehog 3. For the PlayStation 1, we have Metal Gear Solid. For the N64, we have Super Mario 64. For the Sega Dreamcast, we have Soul Calibur. For the PlayStation 2, we have Grand Theft Auto 3. For the GameCube, we have Resident Evil 4. For the Xbox Original, we have Halo 2. For the Xbox 360, we have Modern Warfare 2, Call of Duty. For the PlayStation 3, we have The Last of Us. For the Wii... We have Matt from Wii Sports. <laughs> and for the Wii U, we have Super Mario Maker. You should have expected this. This is our list. For the PlayStation mm -hmm. 4, we have Spider-Man. For the Xbox One, we have Cuphead. For the Nintendo Switch, we have Zelda Breath of the Wild. For the Sega... Sega. <laughs> for the Xbox <laughs> Series X, we have Call of Duty Warzone. And for the PlayStation 5, we have Astro's Playroom. <laughs> you know, I have messed up the Xbox series name a lot. I have never called it the Sega. But the Xbox is the Sega of the modern console. So, Well, it, it's, it's your fault because Xbox has always been a stupid name. <laughs> and they just keep making it stupider and stupider every generation. It's true. Uh, so again, this isn't 
I'm sorry. I I'm, I don't know what I'm saying. It's been a long day. This is the definitive list, mm -hmm. and if you have any other opinions, you're wrong. But you can feel free to leave them yes. in the comments here on the YouTube video. Uh, or in the comments in the chat. Anyway, we got news stories. We're going to just pick a couple because... We're late already. We spent way too long on that. Yeah. Uh, but first, uh, we got a lot of notifications that we just completely ignored this whole time. Um, <laughs> last one was Sleeping Toads TV with the seven months Yeet. We got Lizdrin with 43 months. We got Nyan Kiss with 21 months. What's worse for you? Mustard on a hot dog and bur mustard on a hot dog slash burgers or the term 2.5D? Do I have to eat it, or am I just judging other people? Because if I have to eat it, I'm saying mustard on a hot dog or a burger. Yeah. Well, mustard on a hot dog is one thing. Mustard on a burger is is different. Uh, we've been over this before. On Long Island in the general metropolitan area, they don't put mustard on hamburgers. Uh, I... It better be the best damn mustard on the planet if it's going on on a hamburger that I'm eating. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I'll get I'll get a mustard like a little bit of mustard, and it's like, all right, this is fine. Like In and Out has mustard in the patty, and it's pretty good, right? Yeah, but if you're putting mustard on it and it's a lot and it's shit mustard, get that out of my face. And like, if you're if you're like me and you generally like like your McDonald's hamburgers like with just pickles, and you see go and you say no ketchup. And but you do that in California, and they put mustard on it, and you get nothing but mustard in your burger. That's disappointing. Uh, picky gamer, thank you for the whole year of support. We got Ackmeister with seven months. Keep up the good work, Will and Wood. Love you, guy. I fucking hate you. Uh, <laughs> Cor Cording Acrobat, thank you for the Prime subscription. Proud Prince, what up, dude? Thank you for the twenty three months. Happy twenty three months, Wolf Bros. Hello. Khalil Jama, thank you for the 13 months. Ori? Ori in the Blind Forest is probably a good contender for whatever we just did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me save this list that we have here. Uh, I'll just save it to my Dropbox. Why not? Whatever. Uh, best games per console. All right. Let's pick a good news story, Will. What do we got today? Uh, uh, what do you want? Well, the best-selling console on Black Friday was the Xbox Series S. Yo, if you can believe I'm that, I'm so happy. I love <laughs> this console. I think that I think the Series S needs its fair shot, and I think it was the best-selling because it was available. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as reported by Business Insider, this news comes from the Adobe Digital Economy Index, which claims to have analyzed over 1 trillion visits to retail sites and also surveyed over 1,000 retailers on what items were selling better than others. All this data seemingly points to the winner of Black Friday shopping season being the Series S. At first, this might seem surprising, but there are a few reasons this smaller Xbox is doing so well. For one thing, it's actually available at many stores. Right now, it's very hard to get your hands on the $500 PS5 or Series X. However, the Series S has been available to buy at various stores, including GameStop and Best Buy. Uh, another thing it that, that helps is Game Pass. Between Forza Horizon 5, Halo Infinite, and a large library of older and newer games, the service provides folks with a lot of stuff to play at a low cost. Series S is all digital too, so Game Pass is perfect. Uh, finally, the lower price point is definitely helping to sell the Series S. Uh, I know people who normally wouldn't buy a console this soon after release or, or who never buy Xbox machines. However, many of them have Series S consoles. When asked, the answer often boils down to, well, it was cheap, and Game Pass seems like a good way to play new games and indie games. So, I, yeah. Interestingly enough, uh, Spil Phil Spencer last year told Kotaku that he expected this, saying, I think over the generation, our expectation would be that the price really matters and that you will see a lot of Series S's sell more. Uh, I think that the Series S is a phenomenal entry level into this new generation. I think a lot yes. of people don't have 4K displays yet even. So uh, mm -hmm. I think 1440p is perfectly reasonable for most people. The Series S is even capable of 120 hertz. 
Yes, which is insane for this little tiny. It's very tiny. It is so tiny. Um, yeah. And it's only $300. And so if you need like a, a Halo machine right now, I know it's v- Halo is very uh, uh, system intensive for uh, PCs. Um, but 300 bucks instead of spending a thousand dollars on a, just a graphics card, <laughs> $300 for this little white box, you got it all in a one. So I think it's, I think it's freaking it's, it's a, it's a great deal for a lot of people. And I, 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 yeah. I, I don't even think it's, uh, like, I know some people are just waiting till they can get, go all out and get an Xbox series X or a PlayStation five. Um, Mm -hmm. but I think that a series S would last you a really long time. Even if you get a 4k display, I think the 1440 P 1440 P versus 4k. I feel like you're not even going to notice the difference. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, I just put the series S in the, in the living room. Uh, and I, and I just updated everything because I want to put halo on it. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, also you can hack it and put friggin' all retro games on and stuff. It's really (laughs) easy. Uh, uh, all right. What do you want to do next? Uh, let's t- let's talk about Wesker voice actor real quick. I'm interested in this. Okay. Uh, DC Douglas, the actor uh, best known for his portrayal of Resident Evil's Albert Wesker, has allegedly shared confidential concept art uh, for the unannounced RE4 remake. Ugh. As reported by uh, VGC, the seemingly leaked concept art was shared on Twitter. According to the tweets by Beware Creepy VA's account, the image in question allegedly shows a sketch of the Wesker as, of Wesker as he appears in the separate ways section of the remake. And there you go. That's yeah, what it looks like. I don't remember Wesker at all in, in Resident Evil 4. Well, he doesn't appear in the main campaign. He only appears in Ada's uh, oh, side missions. Right, I'm, right, right. Simon Ada... And then separate ways, which was not on the GameCube release, but it was on every subsequent release. Ah, uh, right, right. Uh, further tweets from the account go on to claim that others have also stated that Douglas shared images with them. The tweets, uh, the tweets on the thread allege that Douglas sent the images to a number of people, despite knowing that he would be breaking the terms of his NDA in doing so, asking them not to share it for, uh, further. While it's currently unclear whether or not these images share into the platform depict genuine concept art from the game. It's interesting to note that the actor has since deleted his Twitter account. Uh, perhaps unsurprisingly, Capcom has yet to issue a public statement confirming or denying the authenticity of the images in question. Uh, rumors surrounding a potential RE remake, uh, RE4 remake began last year. Uh, since then, reports in January have suggested that the development of the game may have seemed to change leadership due to internal disagreements over the direction. We Uh, also have to we have to to talk about this tweet that is linked in the IGN article is from mm -hmm. be at beware creepy VAs. Yes. And it goes on. This is is a thread and it goes on to say since him breaking NDA is getting some attention. I wanted to leave this here. Uh, The guy offers sexual favors in exchange for being booked to (laughs) conventions. And it's a leak of his DMs. Uh, Now, as a man with a three point four. Uh, as a with a 6.3 inch penis i will offer a masters and johnson's the more you know educational tag at the end lol six is natural national average boys so don't fret well that's disappointing (laughs) what the fuck who's he even talking to And and then it says he also uses his va status especially as wesker to manipulate and groom young fans so he can sleep with them he makes sure to get them drunk, even those under 21, before taking advantage of them. Fred and remind that DC Douglas voice of Alvin Resca is a sex pest who uses his VA status to pray. Okay, I want to see. Oh, here we go. I, just I like how the IGN article the like left under all out. Probably just need to do Molly with me and spend four hours fucking. I got mine w- from Netherlands via dark web. Cool, dude. This guy sounds like a great... He sounds like a real Albert Wesker. Yeah. Don't meet your heroes or don't don't learn about them at all. I really like how much that point three inches meant to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that he needed to say that. Well, he might get fired from this job, so... <laughs> Yeah. And maybe that's not a bad thing. 
No. Uh, hey, tell me about fans recreating uh, Ocarina of Time from the source code. I, uh, what is it? Uh, explain. A community-led uh, Zelda reverse engineering team, or ZERT, um, has been working for nearly two years to reverse engineer the classic N64 game into a parsable C code, which can be read by modern computers, similar to how fans were able to fully convert Super Mario 64 in 2019. Um, the achievement marks a huge milestone for the preservation of the classic N64 game and opens the door to modding, hacks, and potentially even ports to other platforms such as PC. Although it's worth stressing, none of this is within the remit of Zert. The kind oh, of reverse engineering Zert... You. I have to pause you. Uh, okay. People in the chat are saying that uh, we got a shout out from G4 TV. What I see that they're streaming what? and they have Golden Boy and the Completionist on. What do they say? Do they say nice things? No. What do they what say? What do they say? Yeah. That's what important. Do they say? We we like we like both of those people. Yes, Golden Boy follows me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he's a uh, he's a New York guy, I think. Um, yeah. And Gerard, we oh, well, of course we we like Gerard. Yes, of course. Um. Anyway, uh, we'll we'll circle back to chat. Tell me what they said. I'm very curious. Yes. Uh, yes. Golden Boy said he likes to watch Wolf Den streams. Oh my God! Tell him to say something uh, next time. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know he watched. They're they're playing. Uh, what are they playing? The hell is this game? Castlevania? Uh, I don't know. I gotta leave our stream to see it. No, this is not Castlevania. What the hell is this? Act Razor. Oh, of course. I only know oh, that game okay, from, yeah. from the jingle. <laughs> well, tell him I say what's up. How you doing? Uh, all right. I'm sorry to to interrupt your 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 spiel here. That's okay. That there are more important things <laughs> than talking about a bunch of nerds reverse engineering code. Hmm. Um. So basically, they figured out Nintendo did not release the source code for Ocarina of Time. Obviously, these fans found a way to make it themselves. <laughs> okay. So yeah. so they were so... able they were able to literally just reverse engineer the game itself to find the source code and remake it from scratch. I'm looking at a, a video of uh, they just linked a video of Mario 64 with like you know like redone, but it looks like yeah it looks like it did in promotional art, so uh, it looks pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Do we have any footage of of Ocarina of Time? Uh it's not the same as when the Mario 64 source code leaked. This is this is yeah. people trying well, no. to recreate it from scratch. Yeah. So I mean, source code is literally that. It's just code. We've been you, working you have on to decompiling do the Master Quest debug version of the game. However, Ocarina of Time has over a dozen other versions which we plan to also decompile and support in in the project. It said. Jeez. So they're working with what they have, basically, is what it looks like. Yeah. So, but now that they have the source code, they can they can do whatever they want with it. They can put it on other systems. They can do extensive modding to it. The, the reason why you can put Doom on just about everything on the planet is because the source code for it is widely available. And right. with that, you can like reverse engineer it to put it on whatever system you want. So, so we only so having have... that master file, yeah. We only have a couple more stories here. Um, mm -hmm. They're not really that important. Uh, okay. Cyberpunk gets a next-gen version. Uh, uh, they finally have a date for the next-gen version. It's the first half of 2022. Okay. Um, and also, they're going to start working on all the free DLC that they said they were going to put out uh, back before the game launched. So that's there's that. Uh, Valve has said they're not going to be making Steam Deck exclusive games because they feel like it's a PC and it just, should just play PC games. However, there was also reports that Valve may be working on a new Half-Life game that is optimized for the Steam Deck. 
Now that, now we're talking, dude. I'm down for that. The game would be like a, but have art, uh, real time strategy elements so that you can like use the uh, touch screen and the buttons better. Now you're not so into it. Fuck, dude. I know. I like Half Life like a lot, and uh, Half Life, and, and I feel incredible. like I'm being yeah. gatekeeped about playing more Half Life. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, oh, that's the last thing. Shooter strategy. Oh god. Uh, and then next you have Call of Duty fans reveal why they aren't buying Vanguard. I bought Vanguard and I don't know why. <laughs> um, yeah, so apparently Call of Duty sales are down this year. Good. Uh, compared to uh, compared to the past few years. Um, GameIndustry.biz in collaboration with PAX and EGX conducted a survey of 671 gaming convention attendees in recent months about their Call of Duty purchasing habits. Of those, 284 individuals said they purchased a Call of Duty game in the last five years, but only 59 of that group said they had bought Vanguard. Of the remaining group that had recently purchased a Call of Duty game but did not buy Vanguard, uh, more than half of the respondents said that they were too busy playing other games to play. In fact, a lot of response uh, respondents seem to have played other games. On... Sorry, let's start this over. A lot of respondents seem to have other games on their minds. Uh, 34% said they played too much Call of Duty lately. 14% said they were already happy with Warzone. 11% said they were specifically waiting for another game to play, either Battlefield 2042 or Halo Infinite. And others say they were put off... Uh, 20% were put off by reviews. 4% uh, were put off by price. 24% were not interested in World War II games. Uh, 6% of people polled did not want to support Activision Blizzard due to business practices and treatment of their employees. Who did this poll? Uh, Gameindustry.biz in collaboration with PAX and EGX. Interesting. Uh, so I think they should... They, they, gotta, they gotta slow down. Call, release Call of Duty bi yearly or 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 just do it every three years because I think they're that's the cycle they're on anyway. Like like I think once yeah. each studio takes three years to make each it. Each studio or does yeah yeah. So and just, I think just do that and have Warzone be the interim and spend all of your time on that and make that you. awesome. Yeah, and it's gotten to the point where now yeah, it's one studio does it every three years, but now all those studios have to now work on every game every year. Right. <laughs> just to make the deadline yeah every freaking one yeah. of their studios is working on call of duty in some way um yeah and i think i think warzone could be their big carrier for the whole call of, call of duty franchise but if I they think, keep supporting it and, and adding new stuff i think the problem is that now this game is too big to not come out every year like this game oh, like activision has pretty much made this game the the entire reason why they make money mm -hmm. every year the the term tentpole in terms of like movies and video games there was one game that held up the studio and then they would use the money from that to like fund other games and even if they didn't those other games didn't sell it's okay because you had the one tentpole to help everything but in this case call of duty is it for them i mean yeah they got blizzard and they got like all that other stuff but like call of duty like always outsells blizzard games so if people aren't buying it this year it doesn't look good for next year because i doubt you know they're gonna like change course right now it's way too late for that yeah yeah i so, even though it's down in sales it's still probably their biggest cash cow it's still probably bringing in a lot yeah. of money just because it's down doesn't mean it's not making a lot um but still, I, I feel like they're putting a lot of money into some lackluster shit. And like their their yeah. their game that's actually good, Warzone, needs a lot more love. And and they're giving they have all of their studios working on Call of Duty and they're spread way too thin across all these different things that don't even matter. <laughs> uh while this small uh sample uh game enthusiast this is a small sample of game enthusiasts. Uh, a seemingly apathy towards Vanguard does seem to be reflected in early sales numbers. 
Vanguard sold fewer units at launch than last year's entry, Black Ops Cold War, in the UK and Europe, with physical units down 26% and digital sales down 44%. That said, in the same regions, it remains the second biggest game launch of 2021 behind FIFA. I... I... I think that uh, once they integrate Vanguard into Warzone, it'll probably get a decent boost. Um, yeah. And that's going to happen in this weekend. So, uh, and I think you get it. You get Warzone a day. The the Warzone, the new Warzone, you get it a day early if you have Vanguard. So uh, right. I think that we're going to see a huge boost in sales this weekend, probably. Um. Anyway. Uh, uh, your wishes says who the heck is buying FIFA? I've literally never seen someone play it. Uh, the the <laughs> the the, the oi governors. The yeah, if you're if you're from Europe, you're probably playing FIFA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh. Anyway, uh, that's all the news, right? Yes, we did it. Yay, we made it, guys. Yay, congrats, everybody. Uh, but I mean, we also, I mean, we gotta just. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! We talked about it already. It's this one from yeah. Shay May <laughs> underscore. Playing Mario Sunshine, looking all sad. Thinking about playing Mario Sunshine, looking all happy. And it's true. Yeah. I feel that. Because I, you know, I said for a really long time, I was like, people give Mario Sunshine too much crap. It's not the best Mario game, but it's a damn good game. And then I replayed it, and that is a very frustrating like, game. Ooh, yeah, yeah, and, and it sucks because I think that you know there was a lot of good concepts in Mario Sunshine, but time yeah. has not been kind to it. No, no, sir. Uh, anyway. Uh, oh, we got some some more notifications here that I forgot about. Okay. Uh, Martin Bernal, thank you for the Prime subscription. Summer Gamer, whatever. Thank you for the host. Uh, CJ Gabriel, thank you for the 12 months. One year chilling in the den. Keep up the great work, boys. Bob Abe. Oh, that's an emote. <laughs> what you a bunch of emotes. Thank you very much for the for the year of support. I appreciate it. I can't I wish I could see what that emote is. Um All right, we're going to talk to you people real quick. Oh, no, 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 we're not. We're yeah. do, we're doing an unboxing. We're doing an unboxing. Oh, we are doing oh, the Do thing. I want to do it? I don't know. I might get in trouble. They uh they, I I say that you have to tell me if it's <laughs> if it's an embargoed thing. And they didn't e- email me, but the thing comes out next week. And it's up for pre-order. It's up for pre-order, but that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Maybe I should do it next week just to be safe. Okay. It's not even that important. All right. It's, well, uh, tune in I, next I, I week. I can say that I have it. Okay. It's the 8 bit do Pro 2, but it's for Xbox. Fancy. Has anybody seen anybody post anything about it? Because I'll I'll open it if if anyone anyone at all. I might I, I might just unbox it next week if you remind me. Do it next week. Says okay. recording acrobat. Okay. All right. We'll yeah. listen to recording acrobat. All right. I, I'll I'll email them and be like, hey, you didn't say anything. Can I can I show it? <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to ruin my relationship with Abe Do. I've been, I, I'm happy that they sent me stuff. Yeah. Um, and I also, I'm also happy they don't, t- they don't talk to me. They just send it because <laughs> then I don't, <laughs> I don't feel obligated to talk about it. I don't like, yeah. I don't feel like I have to talk to them. I don't like. I, I usually don't respond to emails. So if you just send me the stuff, it, I feel good about it. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yes. Now we'll talk to you people. Yes. Uh, first, if you left a comment on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast, if Fred pulled your question, we're going to talk answer it right now. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments. We, get, we will get to you when we are done with everybody else. 
Kev Likes Movies says, you got to have the pre-meal. Oh, wait, this is a quote. We must have said this. <laughs> you got to have the pre-meal pasta before Thanksgiving dinner. I always forget just how Italian you guys are. You know what? We didn't have pre-meal pasta. We had we had chicken soup, but it had orzo noodles in it. So that's technically a pasta. Yes. We had chicken soup? Yeah. I don't remember this part. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We did. Uh... Yeah, she. Uh, our mother mentioned uh, uh, the pre meal pasta, but yes, uh, she 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 backed out of the pre meal pasta. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Alex Beersner says, "I'm so glad I found your podcast. It really makes the drive to and from work a lot more enjoyable. Thanks to you, Bob. I quit being a bitch." nice and bought the switch about two or so years ago it has become my go-to system now i'm basically using my ps4 as a glorified blu-ray player lol i'm Ooh. glad you found this too i'm glad we could uh, uh yeah. keep you company um yeah i mean i use my switch for freaking everything like yeah. to, honestly though when i'm not streaming i'm playing my xbox um yeah i'm <sighs> I really should just set up my Switch dock downstairs and like play the Switch on TV because there's something to be said about playing a game on TV. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that you can't beat the convenience of playing the Switch on the couch or the toilet. Bob Reed says, Bob, check Jackson's new personal best. Did he get a personal best on? Oh, I think he did. Let's see. I have yet to play it today. I have to play it after this. <laughs> Jackson got a 3158 in, in Mario uh, 64. Uh, so what's that'll be my what's goal the tonight. world record? Like fourteen minutes, and it's all glitches. It's like impossible. Yeah. Um. Okay. Anyway, uh, my 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 goal to beat Jackson is to is to just hope that he's using like a lot of he's focusing on all of the text and stuff. Yeah, and they're really hard to do. So like you're not gonna make them all the time, and it's not like you get to reset the run when we do a, when we're reversing each other. It just whatever happens happens. So I'm hoping yeah. just by sheer skill, I can lap them. Anyway, uh, Prince Wolfchild says, "Bob, everyone has played Smash before. Me, never touched the game in my life. Ban yourself from our channel." What are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing on this earth? You gotta you gotta enjoy yourself while you're here. Yeah. Play some Smash. Not online, though, if you want to enjoy yourself. Um, yeah. Sam Rosenbaum says, hey, Bob and Will. Hello. Hey. What a comment to pull, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Technology Addict says, not first. Fred, what are these comments, dude? <laughs> I feel like it's important to <laughs> mention when you're not first, because everyone tries mm. to be first. Right, right, right. So good on you, Technology Addict. You got a speed run Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl next. Jackson beat that game in one sitting when it came out. It took him 24 hours straight. Oh, God. Yeah. Did he eat? Uh, he he shitted and, and peeped all in his chair. Oh. Uh, yeah. It's like that South Park episode. Mom, get the bucket. Yeah. Anyway, we're in the chat now. How you guys doing? All right. Should Super Mario 3D All Stars should be on the tier list for next time for best games ever? No. No. Yeah, I don't know if compilations like if that's fair to include compilations on like lists like this. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, there's plenty of compilations that are together, like a really good value. But uh, yeah. It kind of feels like cheating. Yeah. Like, like, can you say that? Uh, like the like, like, can you say that the 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 friggin' SNES Nintendo Switch Online app yeah. is one of the best games on the Switch? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Bob, are you working on any new videos coming soon? I'm working on two this week. It's been a f it's been a week. Uh, I'll hopefully have one up on Thursday and I have a sponsored video that will hopefully go up earlier next week. Um, Bob, have you checked your Twitter? I checked Jackson's personal best. I see it. I see it right here. Uh, I, I 
I that will be, will be my goal. My goal time. I had a great run last night. I I think I just I said at the beginning of the podcast. I got to Bowser in like 25 minutes and then I just spent like 10 minutes on the last Bowser. It sucks. <laughs> He sucks. It, it's just it's just like RNG, basically, whether or not you're going to throw it in the right spot. Yeah. Bob, how many videos do you put out, and do you still need a side job? No, this is kind of my full-time thing. Um, I put out one a week. I try to, but this week I have to double up because uh, I have a sponsored video for next week. So this week's kind of kind of crazy. Um, the sponsored video is uh, I got two monitors from gigabyte they're 4k 120 hertz through hdmi 2.1 and they are sick and nice. they have USB C, and there's a kvm in the monitor so you pre you have i have my macbook plugged in through USB C, and i have my pc uh -huh. plugged in through display port and i have my keyboard and mouse plugged into the monitor i hit one button and it swaps to the to the other Oh, that's, that's nice. Really that's cool. exactly what you need. And I have two of them and they they it does 4K 144 hertz through USB-C mm -hmm. from my MacBook. Interesting. It's friggin' awesome. Yeah. Um so yeah, I'm very uh I I'm I'm very grateful for that sponsor. But then yeah. I got to do another video for this week, like the actual video for this week, so uh it's it's a lot. <laughs> Next week will be a little easier. Because I, I might, I th I'm not going to post a video next at, at at the end of next week. It'll go up the following Monday, because guys, I have the analog pocket. I have it. I haven't opened it yet, but I have it. Ooh. Hey, Will, thoughts on Eternals? I didn't see it. I'm waiting for that to come to Disney Plus. I am very curious as to why this is the lowest rated MCU movie. <laughs> I'm very interested to see why that is. I did see Shang-Chi, and that was very good. That was a very good movie. Yeah, I'm way I'm way off of these. Uh, apparently, yeah. I saw that Spider-Man uh, uh, No Way Home. I see that it has, uh, yeah. uh, like, it was the highest ticket sales on opening or yeah, highest pre-sale like, since, uh, since uh, Endgame. Yeah, Endgame. Yeah. Yeah, and people people really want to go see Spider Man. That's crazy hey, because good. yeah, it's pandemic, and also yeah. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have all of the. Uh, I think that End Game had like so much more like story wise that would make you want to see that. Uh, people really are just want to see Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. No, you know what it was? It was those NFTs. That AMC ah, theaters yes. were giving people for buying a ticket. Of course. You know, because it's all about them fucking NFTs. Uh, Y'all watch Arcane on Netflix yet? No, I kind of want to, though. No. They're going nuts. And the art looks awesome. Yeah, the art looks very good. But I don't know if I'll get around to that. Uh, Will, which game would you remake from the list? The list we just did? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Two. I wouldn't remake any of them. <laughs> I feel like the games we had are fine the way they are. I feel like I want to pull up the list now. Yeah. Uh, Mega Dragon says, I thought No Way Home wasn't until December. I got news for you, buddy. It's, We're two hours it, it's from It's December, December tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. My computer doesn't know how to open a PSD file. That would be Photoshop. Thank you very much. Oh my God, it's not even in the list. Okay, dude. What a cool. And again, you can't, you can't cancel. When when Windows is like, what would you like to use? And it doesn't give you the one you want. You can't cancel. <laughs> Whatever. We're not looking at it. Never mind. Um, okay. Anyway, yeah, I do want to watch Arcade, but I haven't really watched anything. I'm still trying to walk my way through Star Wars Visions. I watched one the other day. It was pretty good. Nobody oh, I told me getting to watch that. Nobody told me there's just a Mega Man episode. <laughs> there's a it's like it's like an Astro Boy slash Mega Man like character. Yeah. 
I gotta I gotta watch and that. And it's legit like a Doctor Light. A yeah. Escape on your keyboard. Okay, yeah, that's obvious. Um, for those that are thinking of playing League of Legends because of Arcane, don't do it. Spare yourself. Yeah, I would never get that urge. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little yeah, interested I... in their fighting game though. They're making a fighting game. It's like way off. Like we. we oh you know, yeah. Long time. That was part of that initiative when they announced like Valorant and other things in their in their universe. Courting Acrobat says, "Hey Bob and Will, what do you think of about the Marvel Spider-Man Two game?" That is a contender for best PlayStation 2 game. Or do you mean the one that's coming to PS5? We play as Miles oh, and Peter. Oh, that looks good. Because that looks like it's going to be nuts. I'm interested. I'm craving the Hunter and Venom shit. Uh, Lee Doug says, his vision's good uh, uh, or bad? I'm hearing mixed stuff on it. The problem is they're all wildly different. So they're not yeah. all like awesome, but there's some that are awesome. So just watch it. You know, I, I've liked all of them so far. There, there hasn't been one where I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there are definitely ones that are better than others. Um, anyway, uh, I think we're I think we're good to leave unless you have any that you want. Yeah. To leave. Uh, no, I think. I think, I think we can stop it right here. Guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolfden. If you can make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Podcast. So go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolfden podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, I will be streaming on Thursday, hopefully. And Sunday is the big uh, speedrun race between me and, uh, and Jackson. So uh, don't forget, we're going to be playing Mario 64. And we're doing some sort of charity. I still don't know the exact details, but it's going to be a whole big <laughs> event. And Wood wants to be involved somehow. I have no idea what he's going to be doing. We should raid Anthony Carboni. Yes. Speaking of Star Wars, <laughs> here you go. Watch him. He's doing a just chatting All situation. Right. Go at it. Uh, thank you for being here, everybody. Go say hi to Anthony. Go in his chat and say hi. Yeah. You know the deal. It helps everybody. And then you can go about your business. Okay? Thank you for being here. We'll see you all later. Goodbye. Bye!